Hello and welcome back, most illustrious members of the detail. I'm your host D, also known as MTF Doom, and today we're going to talk about a deck that I stole from Jeff Hoogland that has given me the single biggest one-day jump in rank that I've ever experienced, some data I collected over part of that day, and how I recant a previous video about a big problem in Marvel Snap. I hope you enjoy. So to my right, right here, um, before we get started, oh, before we get started, I haven't done this in a while, please subscribe if you find my content elucidating, enlightening, or enriching. It helps me so much. I have something big planned. If I hit 500, when I hit, not if I hit, when I hit 500 subscribers, we're going to do a face reveal. It's going to be, it's going to be huge, right? Because you, you don't know what I look like. I could look like anything. I could look like that. I could look like that. Who knows? I could look like anything. So, um... It's a, it's a huge help. Please help me hit that. We're, we're well on our way. Uh, I want to hit 500. It, it'd be huge. Um, other than that, join the Discord if you haven't yet and you like want to talk more about Marvel Snap. It's really It's been popping off. A lot of really cool stuff going on in there. And I get some of my best video ideas from there. And I always give credit. Uh, so if you like give me a deck idea there, you'll get a shout out in a video, which is cool if you're into that. Okay. So this is a deck that I stole... Uh, unabashedly from Jeff Hoogland. That's why it's called Hoog's Dudes. So he, so uh, there's one difference. Um, he has Darkhawk and I don't. So I have put Scorpion here because I like doing the Iceman, Korg, Scorpion, Iceman, Korg, Scorpion again. Uh, we also have Black Widow. Again, with Darkhawk, this is better, but Black Widow on her own can kind of be disruptive enough sometimes in the Thanos matchup, like playing her with priority locks your opponent out of drawing that like redrawing their stones and makes them have played really, really bad. Like they just played one stone and didn't get to draw two more out of their deck and stuff. So that's really cool. Um, on four being able to black widow and scorpion. The reason I picked scorpion instead of like lizard or collector were kind of the other two that I was batting around is because you can go widows bite them and then give it minus one and they like have to play it out or they are missing two draws because they're going to miss their turn five and six draw by holding it but also they're going to give minus power to one lane and fill a slot Ooh, that's spicy big fan um other than that you're just trying to go off with bishop basically uh or angela right because you're going to play your one cost cards we have three very impactful one costs. We have Hood, we have Iceman, and we have Korg. Now, all three of these are good on turn one. Uh, I'd say Korg, Korg or Iceman over Hood usually, but situationally, any of them are fine. Uh, and then on turn two, you want to play maybe even just another one drop. And then on turn three, you want to play like a one drop and Beast and bounce all of them back uh, or play Bishop if you have it. The point is your Bishop gets just absurd it gets so big this bishop's like on his own he he wins a lane on his own pretty often and you're playing out like mid-level threats right you're playing like six power cards uh, angela can be like a six and eight um keep in mind angela anything you any of the ones you put in angela's lane and then falcon back to your hand or beast back will still have buffed Angela. So she'll be in your hand as like a 2-4. If you go like Angela 1-1 one, one Beast, she'll be in your hand as a 2-4. She doesn't count Beast as having played. And then when you replay her, the one cost you played now costs zero. So next turn, she's a 1. The 1s are zeros. So now she's a 2-8 uh, with just those cards. Plus, like, if you have anything else, it the whole deck... It's a really well-oiled machine. Korg and Black Widow specifically are here for Darkhawk, which we don't have, as I mentioned. So this spot, the Scorpion, the Korg, and the Black Widow can all kind of be different cards. You, Korg, really, you do want it to be a one cost. Uh, I was in a mirror against someone who was playing Hawkeye. And that's like a that's a cool piece of tech in this deck, right? Like Hawkeye on one into whatever on two. Like it literally does just Angela... And then on three, you know, Hood Beast, and now Hawkeye's back in your hand. Again, 
keeps the plus two. So when you replay him, he's a one three that on reveal will become a one five if you play a card next turn. That's that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, for a while, I was also playing collector in this spot because beast and falcon and hood all buff collector but it didn't seem good enough uh he would only get to be like a two three at that point just play sent uh sentry which is also sentry sentinel uh this one sentinel don't don't play sentry play sentinel another fine spot for the scorpion um or the black widow if you don't have the uh dark hawk so so that's it oh and carnage because we're just using, like, every piece of the animal on this. You know, you play out your Mysterio and your Hood, then you eat them with Carnage, and then you have the 6 over here, plus the Mysterio is a 2-4 that gave plus 3 to Bishop. Oh, it's all so well-oiled. It's so, so, so well-oiled. So, this deck is really great. I went from 74 to 86 in one day, but there's a caveat to that. So, let's go to that. Okay, cool. Um, it is that Elysium was the hot location. Um, oh, 77, 77 to 86. Uh, so I, I calculate my rank as just a flat number of cubes. So 77 and two out of 10 is 772 cubes, right? Because you need 10 per rank. So if your rank one, you you have exactly 10 cubes. And when you're rank infinite, 100, you have exactly 1,000 cubes, right? So that's how I, I keep tally of my rank. I have the results here. I played nothing but Bishop Storm. I also stopped recording my results after 30 games, at which point we were at 786, which is a 0.5 cubes per game, which is not a bad cube rate, especially for like a deck that I kind of picked up because of the hot location. But that brings me to, oh, also I'll leave a link to make this a viewable document, um, down below. I think I, I might not, uh, based on what else you'll be able to see in my drive. Uh, but i I might leave it down there. Okay. But this takes me to the final point of this video, which is that at one point I made a video about how feature and hot locations were bad for the game. I don't know. There's not a feature hot location. I was going to click over there to show you feature and hot location, but there's not one right now. But I made a video about the big problem with Marvel Snap. And I, uh, in a lot of ways, still stand by it. But in some other important ways, I take it all back because now I'm winning. No, that's that's mostly a joke. I I really liked the Elysium location. I, I like that it helped a lot of decks, but it also gave an edge to people who are willing to engage and also like a bishop deck can be run like with notably like uh, the elysium location you could have played like a bishop zoo deck and and like absolutely popped off with elysium you could have played a lot of decks that don't require that many if any pool three cards i wanted to prove like i wanted while i'm almost pool three complete a big part of why I chose this deck is because I was missing a very important, perhaps even key element of it in, in Darkhawk. And I wanted to see if I could still make huge gains with a suboptimal deck list because even the suboptimal deck list was playing into the strengths of the feature location. And I'm glad that the answer is yes. And so while I still think that feature and hot locations can be problematic, especially when they are so narrow, like the the death's altar i still think is was one of the most just abysmal like experiences for for a day actually i think that one was two days i appreciate that they've changed it to only be 24 hours and i appreciate that they picked one that doesn't narrow down the field like and and that's the other thing is if you go back over here uh where is it right there um you know you'll see like the amount of different decks I saw Patriot, I had the mirror, I saw Hella, Odin Wong, Death Wave, Thanos, some kind of Angela Sentinel that they they left because I just went off. I saw negative decks. I saw a couple negative decks. I got got by some negative decks. Um, you know, Lockjaws. Like, like look at the, you know when when this when this was um Death's Altar, 
every one of these opponent deck, you know, this, this whole line, it was 90%, uh, you know, Deadpool and something else, Deadpool and something like functionally death wave, but it didn't even matter. Like if they had death or wave, cause they had Deadpool. So it was like just Deadpool and something else, Deadpool and something else. So I'm glad also that I, I kept all this data and look like nothing. There were like, like, look, any, any meta where there's just some like, oh yeah, I saw back-to-back mid-range decks. Just people playing good cards that are mostly like pool two and some pool three. But I don't even think the mid-range deck plays pool four cards. I think it's that, like, it's that early. I don't know. I had a lot of fun. I really like this location. Um, I wish I did a short, but I, like I mentioned in my last video, was really busy with work stuff. I was just not about to do that. So I didn't, but yeah, um, shout out to second dinner the, the keep giving us locations like that. Keep giving us like locations that let let players express themselves through their deck and their gameplay style rather than that limit them to only a very narrow set of options. And I will be a happy player. That's it for today. I hope you enjoy the content. I hope you find it elucidating, enlightening, and enriching. And if you do, the best way to let me know is with a subscription or a like down below. As Since I'm already uh, aping Jeff Hoogland's deck, I'm just going to ape one of his sayings, too, right here, which is, like, the idea of liking something is a really low bar. If you liked this video, you should hit the button. You liked it. You know, that's not, it's not a commitment other than, I yeah, I kind of liked that weird person talking at me for 10 minutes. That was, in, I liked it. Um, I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you all tomorrow.